I'm joined here live in the studio for Seek and Destroy. This is Wayfair. Take it away, guys.
Uh, thank you guys so much for playing. That was amazing. Uh, thanks for stopping by here in Seattle on your uh, West Coast tour. You guys are just doing about two weeks or so of, uh, of dates and then heading back to uh, Denver. You guys started off the tour with, or earlier in the tour, sort of some special performances as well, right? Uh, yeah, we did a couple of performances of the entire A Romance of Violence album, which is like still being treated as our new album, even though there were two years that kind of didn't happen there. Uh, we got to do a show at St. Vitus in Brooklyn and then a hometown show at the Bluebird where we did the whole thing. And then this is our first tour back and it's really great to be back out and great to be here. You were able to get a, um, uh, Kelly Schilling from Dreadnought to do some of the live stuff with you guys? Yeah, she did a guest performance on the album of some like operatic kind of vocals that she added. And she uh, came along to both the New York and Denver shows and performed those live. And it was a cool, like special element to have. That's awesome. She also did the uh, organ for yeah. Fire and Gold, which, yeah, was performed on the album, but we needed somebody else to do it because we only have four guys. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She stepped in like a consummate pro and classed us up a bit. Well, so this last album, you know, which is absolutely fantastic, it just came out sort of pre plague and you know the, mid, the album mid plague mid plague yeah, yeah. right uh it, it definitely the the album has a, a like kind of goes into depth with the the shadow of like the transcontinental railroad and and you know some of these other very western historical elements uh through sort of the lens that you guys provided uh what's it like kind of performing that when we're in like sort of the shadow of a plague right now you know because it's still very much out there and you guys are touring you know the west coast has that been uh, a hugely different experience or are you finding it to be something akin to what it was like before uh, i mean it's it's more akin to like what it was before than uh when i was on tour with my other band uh blood incantation a couple months ago and it was a uh, a lot different than um a lot people were a little bit more uh hesitant to come out to shows understandably um but on this tour it's actually been probably wayfarer's best tour so far as far as attendance and uh all that stuff so yeah it's it's definitely been fine for us so far but yeah yeah and i mean in relation to what you're talking about with like the kind of themes of the album and stuff we definitely recorded it right in the kind of heaviest part of the pandemic or one of the heaviest parts um we were actually booked to go to new york and record it with colin marston like we did the previous album world's blood on like march 30th of 2020 so that was right when kind of the hammer dropped and everything got strange and at first we're like okay yeah we'll just do it in like six weeks and then it very clearly was like oh that's not gonna happen but we ended up doing it at home during the summer and recording it at that time there was definitely like a different feeling because it was not only um the pandemic but you know there were all the kind of protests around the george floyd thing and all sorts of political upheaval and writing an album that kind of touches back on like human nature and the draw to do terrible things um in the middle of that there was a bit of poignancy for that for sure but now at this point, we're also beaten down and used to what's going on that, yeah, being out here like two years into COVID, it's just like, oh, well, we're, we're just going for it. But it's been great. And I think we're appreciative to be playing shows again. And we can tell that everyone at the shows is appreciative to like going out and enjoying things again because, you know, we lost it for a while. Yeah, the energy is, is definitely like, uh, it could feel like a sense of relief. I've definitely spoken with a few people who said this is like one of the first shows since you know the pandemic started and have gone out to and they're just like really happy to be back out and um attending shows again so that's been really cool i think there's like a little bit of extra appreciation now and a little bit of extra uh passion if you will so for it so i know cool. this will be a lot of like a lot of people's first time going back to shows tonight as well when you guys play at the substation uh which is really exciting um is that has that been a, a unique experience just in and of itself kind of seeing people come back out of you know sort of their hiding spots for the last couple of years is that i'd say every day at the merch table i've had a conversation multiple times i can't hear you oh yeah i'd say every day after every show so far i've had a conversation at the merch table just about how it's been someone's first show and they're very excited to be here and thanks for coming and you know risking your health to do this but um I personally have been more locked down than the other guys, so it's more of a, a shock for me than them. They've been out and about, but you know, I'm getting used to it myself, so it's been cool. Well, you guys have also remained fairly busy. I know, you know, you you've played through here before, and uh, uh, Stormkeep uh, put out a record really recently, which is most of your guys' kind of side project as well. Was that written through the pandemic and recorded through the pandemic as well? Or um, yeah, that's kind of like 
well, yeah, my my brainchild, I guess. But it's but with help from uh, these two guys, and um, that was something that happened kind of not because of the pandemic, but it definitely was sped up because of that, because we were not touring with all our bands and uh, sitting at home playing guitar all the time. So, yeah, it just kind of inevitably, inevitably happened that way. Um, similarly, I mean, Wayfair even got some extra time to work on uh, Romance with Violence because of the pandemic as well. So we all kind of used that opportunity to do a lot of writing and just, uh, you know, instead of playing our music live, just like focusing on the other aspect of it. Ah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I think it was the, the sort of thing that, you know, like we talked about earlier, when everything was first happening with the pandemic, it, nobody knew how long it would last. And we're like, okay, we'll just wait it out. And then after a month or two, it started to set in of like, this isn't going away anytime soon. So we could either sit around or like at least be constructive and send music back and forth. And it was a really, really kind of fruitful time. Like obviously it's, you know, um, that's just a silver lining in an overall dark and strange time. But for for the music, it honestly was kind of great to just have the time to sit and focus on things. We did Romance with Violence. We did the Stormkeep album. We did um, some stuff with our other band, like Cardinal. It was like a really good time to slow down and just focus on playing and writing for a while. Wow, that's amazing. Well, thank you guys for you know this tour and coming out and playing for us here at KXP. Uh, we really do appreciate it and really excited to see you guys play again tonight. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you guys, though. It, it's, it was really fantastic. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, do you guys uh, have any parting words for our listeners? All right. Yeah, <laughs> well, thank uh, you. Thank you for yeah. listening, and uh, we look forward to playing tonight. Awesome. Uh, yeah. This is KXP 90.3 FM Seattle. You guys just heard Wayfair. Thank you so much. Thank Cheers. You. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.